Welcome back to Wallington Filming. Your host, the one and only Candleback. Now then, have you got solar panels on your roof? As you can see, I've got about seven solar panels on my roof and it's a pretty sunny day. So yeah, I'm making money, but is it really worth it? Is it really worth paying out large sums of money for solar panels on your roof? In this video, we're going to look at the pros and cons of investing in solar panels. Let's talk about these solar panels. So I've got seven solar panels on my roof and I've got a massive Duracell battery. You're a fighter. <clears throat> That's some... Some Duracell battery that is, isn't it? Hey, give me a beauty. Hey, look at that. Massive, massive. Mm. I can be of a noise, though. Tell you what, it's like Blackpool Illuminations inside there. Mm. Awesome, though, eh? That's what it's all about, guys. Free electric. Well, not free. It is when you paid for it. Well, it is inside the control box. Just took the front off, as you do. And you got all that going on down there. Awesome. Yep. Flashing lights there. <laughs> Tell you what, look at it. Bloody lights everywhere. So yeah, that's what's inside the box. Above the battery. Must cost a few quid that. Don't know what all that's about. Awesome though, eh? That battery stores power from the solar panels uh, in the day while I'm at work. And then when I get home, I've got a bit of free electric to use my electric cooker and my kettle and stuff like that. So let's start from the beginning. Originally, I was just curious of the situation with solar panels. Then I made the mistake of inviting somebody round to educate me on it who worked for a solar panel company. <laughs> Don't do that. Because they're very good at doing their job and persuading you to have solar panels and a battery fitted. Um, when all you really want to do is know a little bit about it. But before you know it, you've signed the paperwork and worked on the way. So that particular system with solar panels, inverter, battery, and then I had another uh, electronic box which uh, lowers the voltage to the plugs because you use more than you need to on most appliances or something. So I had all that fitted. Total cost was about 11,000. So in this video, I'm going to tell you whether I think it's worth you having solar panels and a battery or not. So I had them all fitted. And even though they tell you that it's going to take you 20 years to get your money back. It sort of goes over your head. And you, you don't, don't take that into consideration for some point. So what we're going to talk about is, is it worth you paying out that amount of money on solar panels? Or could it better be invested elsewhere? Now at the minute, yes. With the en energy prices, gas, electric, and stuff like that going through the roof, you could argue, well, yeah, 
I am going to say fired a bit because when you're at home, solar panels are going to be producing electricity for probably four or five months of the year. And, um, you know, I can do all my cooking, my washing, my clothes and everything. And I'm using the, the power coming from the solar panels. Any excess power goes into the battery for later on in the day or later on in the night. There is certain things that they don't tell you. Like, I, I give them the okay for the solar panels without doing a massive amount of research. And what you've got to remember is four or five months out of the year, that's all you're going to get out of them. Um, so you could say, well, what about the, the windmill things? You know, you see them in, in the fields, don't you? a lot of videos on them windmills because you might be thinking oh i love solar panels which are making energy in the summer i love a windmill on my chimney making electric with the wind and um, in the winter months when it's windy and all that plover but the trouble with them windmills i've watched a few videos on them and because there's a lot of moving parts and motors and, and stuff like that in them windmills they need constant maintenance, servicing, and they break down quite a lot. And they're not cheap, are they? So, the videos I've watched on them, them windmills is that the conclusion of that is they're not really worth having at the minute because they're so expensive and all the maintenance costs that go with them because of all the moving parts. So that sort of throws that out the window. Whereas solar panels, there's no moving parts, is there? So you just put them up, probably clean, clean them every X amount of years, which would involve scaffolding going up at the front of your house, don't forget. Um, and you're good to go with them. But ask yourself the question, what if something goes wrong with your solar panels? How long are they covered for? Is it a year? Or, or do the solar panels, or do the solar panel people cover them for longer? That I don't know. I need to check on that. But what I do know is, if your inverter that's probably in your attic connected to your solar panels, if that goes wrong, yes, they are guaranteed for about ten years. Them inverters. But mine's just gone okay, wrong. Okay, so here's the inverter which is fitted on the wall in the loft space. So the panels are just above me here. This is a thing that's giving me the problem. Now then, I'll give you a bit of a close up of it. So I've got the engineer coming around any minute. So this is a bit of a splicing video. Uh, got the engineer coming around any minute and I don't even think he's going to see what's wrong with it. He's just going to take it off and replace it with a new one. Now then, according to the boss of Project Solar UK, they don't use this make and model no more. They're using another make. Now, you ask yourself the question, don't you? Why are they not using this particular make anymore? Is it because it's always going wrong? and people are complaining about having to pay out call-out charges? Or have they actually changed it for a different make uh, because they're getting them, getting them a lot cheaper? That's what you need to ask yourself, isn't it? So they're either going wrong or they're getting a better deal somewhere else. But is the new inverter going to be any better or not? Inquiring minds want to know. And you're never going to find out, are you? So, let me give you a bit of a close up. Wires. So you've got the wires coming from solar panels on the roof. There's your wire, that's your power cable uh, going into the inverter. It's that grow watt, that's the make. And as you can see, nothing on the display at all. Now, oh. yeah, nothing on there. Now, it could be just a fuse. I don't know unless I took it 
to bits and opened it up myself. Uh, and there's all your your cables and uh, switch off things, whatever they're called, like breakers or whatever. And then it goes down to the battery or whatever it is downstairs. But it does say not here. But that some of the videos I've watched on YouTube, you do that in, in the display lights up, but it don't. So I don't know what's wrong with it. It could be a big problem or it could be just a fuse. Um, does, I, I do wish I'd just undone them screws and see, to see if it was a fuse, but you know, I don't want to get electrocuted and kill myself, do I? So we'll see what um, inverter he sticks up in replace of this one. I don't even think he'll bother uh, checking to see what's wrong with it. He'll just take it off, send that back to the manufacturers and um, replace it with a different one. I'll, I'll ask him a few questions, to be fair. But yeah, there it is. Non-working inverter, costing me 350 quid for the bloke to come out and change it. Even though I shouldn't be paying it, should I? Because if that's gone wrong in two or three years, it's not uh, it's not lasted as long as it should have done. So why am I paying for labour? But yeah, there you go. And to my amazement, the solar panel company I use have said, yes, you are covered for a new inverter. Now, I've not been producing electric for a couple of months now because I didn't realise it was down. And then I've discovered that my inverter's completely not working. But the worst thing about it is, although I can get a new inverter fitted for free, it doesn't cover labour. Now my solar panel company who fitted all these, Project Solar UK, are gonna fit me a new inverter. But they wanted 350 quid, or thereabouts, for an engineer to come out and fit me a new one. <laughs> hey, and don't forget, you've got to take a day off work for that. So whatever you earn a day is going to be added to that uh, bill for the engineer to come out. So it could go into 500 quid if you're not careful. Now I argued the fact with Project Solar that how can I not be covered for parts and labour? Why am I just covered for parts? I argued and I argued with him and um, luckily I got it down to £162 including VAT. Which I still feel I shouldn't be paying. Unfortunately I've not read all the fine print of the contract and everything like that and I, I nearly went to citizens advice and I was probably I, I nearly thought to myself should I go to trading standards to sort this out but because he knocked it down to 160 odd quid and I didn't want all the headache I um I settled for that but I do feel that if you're going to buy solar panels and stuff you need to ask, is it covered for parts and labour or just parts? Because it's all electronic. Electronic things are not designed to last forever. They go wrong. And I've only had my solar panels and the inverter up for two or three years. And the inverter's not working and it comes with a 300 odd pound bill. So bear that in mind. I talk about 20 years to get your money back. Well, that's going to go up, isn't it? If you're going to start paying for a new inverter and an engineer to come round, and what happens when you say the panels go wrong? You know what I'm saying? So, I've got them coming to, to, to do that. Thank God. So, I would say, if you're thinking of having solar panels fitted, you should weigh up different options first. Have you got a mortgage? Because if you have, you'd be better off paying that £11,000 or whatever the charge you're, you'd be better off paying that off your mortgage 
you'll get a faster return from your money. I mean, don't ask me what the rates are and everything like that on mortgage, mortgages, but if you were to pay 10 grand off your mortgage, you would save absolutely thousands and thousands of pounds over the term of your mortgage. And I would personally say you are better off not having the solar panels and the battery, right, and paying it off your, your, your mortgage or your house because the, the money you would save would be astronomical and it would be a faster return on, on your investment of, say, 10000 for example. I certainly, if I had my time again, I certainly would not be spending that type of money on, on solar panels, battery and inverters and all the rest of it because um, as far as I'm concerned, you should be covered for parts and labour and you'll probably find you're not. And one other thing I should point out, when I had the sales blow round from Project Solar, um, is I signed all the contracts and everything like that. And then I started watching a few, few videos. I thought I better get some knowledge behind me here. And I watched a few videos and they said, they were basically saying, for every solar panel you have on your roof, you, you're really supposed to have what's called a mini inverter on the back of each solar panel and it all wired up. Basically what they do is, when the sun goes over your solar panels, right, and obviously the planet's going round, isn't it? So the sun moves over your solar panels. If you haven't got them little mini inverted things connected to your solar panels, right, as the sun goes over and say half your solar panels stop getting the sun, that means the other solar panels are not producing any power for whatever reason. This is what I learned. So if you don't have them mini inverters on the back, that's what happens. But if you do, and half your solar panels are only getting the, uh, the sun, you're still producing power. Bear that in mind. And I did, I spoke to the, the sales bloke. I said, what's to say about these mini inverters going on the back? Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And he told me all that information. I said, well, why did you not tell me this in the first place? He goes, oh, uh, because it, it, it bumps the, the price up. I said, well, don't you think you should give the customer the option of that? Because when, when the sun starts moving off my panels and I'm only getting sun on the, off my panels, I, I'm not producing any power, a complete waste of time, isn't it? And he goes, well, yeah, but it bumps the price up. We, we like to keep the price down. But you're not providing me with... Um, proper information for my investment of money that I'm, I'm giving your company. So, I mean, I should have complained about that, but I, I never got round to it, to be honest. But just bear that in mind. If you have solar panels, you want the mini inverters that go on back of each panel, which allow them um, to keep creating power, even if half of them haven't got sun on them. So you should bear, bear that in mind. Um, and also, if you haven't got the full amount to pay, pay for them, they will um, tell you to go with um, a finance company uh, to, to take out the rest of the money to pay for them. Bear in mind, if it goes through a finance company and you don't pay that loan because you end up ill or something like that, that finance company could probably take your solar panels off you and everything. Whereas if you get an unsecured personal loan off your bank to pay for it, Right, if you if you you know unable to work, then the bank just loses their money, and you get to keep your solar panel. So don't go with a finance company, you know, which is what you probably do if you buy a new car and stuff like that. Don't use finance company. Get personal unsecured loan for that. But um, yeah, so I'm using Project Solar. I, I rang the, the the main boss up and. Um, he, he was all right. I got, I got it reduced to half the amount, 160 odd quid instead of 300 and some odd pound. I do feel I shouldn't have, shouldn't have paid that anyway. And if I'd have pursued it, I could have probably sorted something else out. But uh, even when, when, when I rang up and spoke to some woman on the phone, um, 
I, I was expecting a bit more of a happier, politer response from whoever was on the end of the phone. And whoever I spoke to, it just sounded like somebody had died in the family and they, they didn't want to be at work. So you have got that to deal with as well. At the end of the day, I would say, if you've got a, got a mortgage, don't buy solar panels and uh, battery and all that. Use the money to, to pay off pay off your mortgage and, and reduce your, your mortgage because you'll save money on your monthly instalments, won't you? I wish I had to bother, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? And there's a lot of people, if, if you're clever enough, you could probably educate yourself and, and, and sort it out yourself. Design it and fit it all yourself. And if anybody out there knows how to add more batteries and stuff to the, my original dual cell battery I've got with them, that would be handy. Um, because the battery itself was uh, three grand. Uh, it weren't just solar panels, it, just the battery on its own, because it was new at the time, was, it, that was three grand. And to be fair, it, it don't know old shit loads of power. If it's on 100% charge, it, it will last me probably towards the end of the night, depending on what I've got going. But uh, it'd be nice to add some more batteries on, but I'm not buying any more batteries at 300, uh, £3,000 because it just takes too long to get your money back from solar panels and a battery. Yeah, it, it's, you can't tell me you're going to go 20 years down the line and your battery and your solar panels uh, are, are going to be um, all, all functional still. They're going to go wrong, aren't they? So that 20 years of getting your money back could go up to 25 years, can't it? So you're never going to get your money back on it. Yeah, you save save on your, your electric, but... You know, stick your money into stocks and shares or... Um, Paid off your mortgage, guys. Well, that's about it. Just get you, just a little bit of something to think about if you're thinking about it. So, from yours truly, um, stay safe and keep the flame burning. Keep it burning, guys. Keep it. Burning.